we walk with God, there are things that do happen to us now. They will not happen. Now, he can make it work for us. And, uh, but it is the will of God. And so ever, whoso do the will of God will abide forever, right? Cast all your cares upon the Lord.
connecting unbelief with an evil heart. And it's, it's all encompassing. Um, kind of meaning turning aside from God. So unbelief abandons God, makes one abandon God and rebel against him. The whole argument dealt with here is that the, uh, if they would abandon uh, their belief in the son, this is what he was talking about here in, in, in Hebrews, you know the background of Hebrews, how he was admonishing them, some was turning back, getting ready to turn back. But he said, admonish one another daily. The, the, the tendency to turn back was so strong until he really asked them to admonish one another daily. But as I thought on that and was really thinking on it more, and as I just began to repent before the Lord, there's some things that God asked me to do. I've done a lot of things that he asked me to do, but there's some things that I haven't done that I know he told me to do. But you're not like that, but I'm trying to get a point across. What pleases God is faith. And when you have faith, you obey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, so as I was thinking about this, this is the thought that came to my mind. We were riding along afterward. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies. So what do you mean by that? Okay. You know the story of Jonah, right? This is what Jonah said after chapter 1 talks about Jonah was called to go to Nineveh. And Jonah did not want to do it. Anybody ever felt that way? He didn't want to do it. And so he decides that I'm going to Tasha. <laughs> I'm going somewhere else. As though he could flee from the presence of God. So he caught the ship, and you know the story. He got, went to Tasha. And then, so they got on the ship, the boat, and a storm came up. And they were fighting for their lives. Can I tell you something? When we don't obey, we jeopardize somebody else. So it's not always about us, right? So they, all their lives were in danger because Jonah was fleeing from the presence of God. And so God allowed the wind to come. And then as he allowed the wind to come, then um, they began to conclude, okay, there's, it's like a curse after us here. Somebody, is, somebody is, 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 is not right with their God. So they had everybody to cry out to their God. And so John was back there sleeping. What are you doing sleeping? Get up. Cry unto your God. Don't you see we're in trouble? So John said, well, I, I, I know why this is happening. He said, uh, they said who are you? Where you, what's your, you know, what's your nationality? Where you come from? Oh, I'm, I'm a Hebrew. I'm, uh, you know, I, 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 I serve the God of heaven and the earth and the sea so then they got really trouble like what in the world who is this and so he said I, I tell you how can, you can stop this problem if the Lord is angry with me because I'm running I'm running from him I, he asked me to do something and I didn't do it so I'm running from him but if you throw me overboard then, then all this will cease and um, so they looked at it like, no, I don't bleed all that. So they just started fighting real hard, trying to see if they could bring the ship to the land and so on. But after it, it got worse, then at the last, they drew a conclusion that, well, let's just throw them overboard, see what happened. When they threw them overboard, there was a great calm. But God wasn't ready to destroy Jonah's life. He had already prepared a whale or a fish, right? So the fish grabbed him up, and you know the story, and so on. And he went down to the depths of hell. He said the bars of the earth and all that kind of stuff. He was talking about the weeds that were around his head. And, but then, at his wit's end, he cried out unto God. And as he cried out unto God, God heard his cry. 
And it was after he had done this that he had this to say. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. What was he saying? He was like, uh, uh, there's no Jonas here. But the point was, is being made is that Jonah fled. He thought he could flee from the presence of God. He thought he could get away with not obeying the Lord. He thought he could get away with, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really need him in my life. And it cost him a lot. Lying vanities, one way to say it is they that observe worthless idols forsake their own mercies. There was mercy for God and there's mercy for you and I every day that God sends. And we have an obligation from the Lord to obey him, right? When it's all said and done, as I said earlier, it is the will of God that's necessary. How many know that you're walking in the will of God right now? Don't want to see your hands. But we should know when we're walking in the will of God. It's very important that we know and walk in the will of God, right? Because if, uh, uh, um, because we don't want to allow ourselves to be at the end of the day finding out that we didn't, and we stand before God. So Jonah, there he was, and he had this to say for you and I: if we observe lying vanities or worthless idols, things that we put before the Lord, right? When we put things before the Lord, we're actually trying to outsmart God. We seem like we know more than God. And, but when we obey the Lord, this is the greatest safety. That is the greatest good that can happen. He thought he could escape the call of God. He thought he could uh, better his lot. He thought he could live independently from God. And... Um, but he found out that we can't make it without God. We can't make it without God. God is for us. God cares for us. You know, an unpopular subject is sin, right? It's, it's unpopular because, you know, we, no one likes to do self-examination. But I, I worked in a retail store one time. And as I worked in a retail store... Every year we had to do inventory. It's not inventory. It means we had to find out what we had. And sometimes I found out that there was stuff that I had that should have been gone. There was stuff that I had that was tying up my open to spin. So I had to get rid of it or sell it or do something, mark it down. And after dealing with that adequately then, uh, and knowing what I had, it made a change. And our lives are like that. We have to always take inventory of our lives. Always. We never want to assume that it's all, everything is well with us. God's presence does not operate based on how well we're doing. It's a, he's a God of grace, right? And since he's a God of grace... Sometimes it's hard to measure where we really are by the presence of God, right? And, um, uh, but I'm just, I, I want you to think about that. And so I was really uh, uh, taken back to a certain degree, and then God began to minister to me in a very significant way. And I began to confess and repent for the things that slowly harden my heart. And as they begin to slowly harden my heart, you drift away from that keen sensitivity. You still hear from God, right? But you move away from that keen sensitivity. And, uh, and uh, so it, it was, it, it was a really a good point of attention for me. And uh, so as he went on further to talk about Jonah, it further reiterated the point. So God cares for us today.
And I know we're living in this age of grace. And it's, it, is, it is important that we know the difference between law and grace. And I won't get into that. But I want, because this is, I think, is, is sort of what I was on, pressed upon my heart. And so as, as I was sitting there in the seat, the, the thought came to me to do this. To ask who want the will of God for your life now. Not tomorrow, not six months, but who wants his will now? Who want to walk hand in hand with God now? It's important. God, as we walk with God, there, there are things that do happen to us now, they will not happen. Or God can make it better. He can make it work for us. And, uh, but it is the will of God. Whosoever, whoso do the will of God will abide forever, right? Will abide forever. Now, I'm not, the message is not uh, one like it was last week. But this is one a more or less where in the midst of what we're going through, we want to focus on God's will. What does God want? As I was, as I was, uh, while we were out these two months, I began to say, well, Lord, I want to make sure that when we come together, we're not just walking in tradition and just, and not serving God's purpose. You know, that's crucial, you know, and, 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 and I'm, as, as a leader, I ask God, God, you deal with my heart. Give me a heart for the will of God, for lost souls to set captives free. This, this is what pleases God. And uh, I, I don't want to be guilty of just going through the motion. You know what I'm saying? I can go to a movie theater on a Sunday if I'm not going to serve God's purpose, right? So I, I, the point that I'm making, brothers and sisters, is this year, it is really late. And they're moving toward one world order. They got things in place. They're moving toward what you read in Revelations about placing a metal band on people's wrists, a chip, with all the information about you. They're already talking about it. It's already people are, are, are sending the links to different ones. It's just so much being set different places. Uh, exposure is taking place. Yeah. And, um, but the point that I was about to make was this. As we were out these two months, God financially almost double what we've been getting. So I said, well, why is this happening? All the reaching out, trying to encourage saints to give. And, <laughs> and when, we can't, when we can't meet, God decides to bless. <laughs> so it made me want to say, God, are you pleased with our worship? Are we meeting, are we doing what you want? And uh, so um, I, I want you to follow along with me. Let's, let's do some, allow God by the Holy Spirit to do some self-examination. And I can assure you what pleases God. He said, for if we will judge ourselves, then we will not be judged, right? So it's better to judge ourselves. So I know that this is a short message, but what I want to say, is, what I want to do is this. How much do you want to walk with God? Jonah had some other things in his life. He hated the Ninevites. Because they were mean. Because they were cruel. And he hated them. And he literally wanted God to bring judgment on them. 
God exposed him. And when he made the little gourd and Jonah was so happy, and God began to say, now you, 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 you love that little gourd because when God, the sun hit it and it dried up, the little vine dried up, Jonah was mad again. Say, Jonah, you love that little gourd, didn't you? He said, now you had more mercy for that little gourd that springs up overnight. Then these people that didn't know their left hand from their right, and he said, I mean, it was, it, it was like a soul-searching thing. And so, how much do we love people? How much do we love the lost sinners? Right. We, we really have to ask ourselves that, right? How much do we really love the sinners? Because love always finds a way, right? right. I remember preaching at, uh, in Valley Forge Christian College years ago, me and a couple other ministers. And they were asking, and they had seminars to try to find out how to reach the inner cities. And I wasn't supposed to preach. It was funny. But one of the ministers couldn't make it. And so they asked me if I would minister. So, Lord, this is the last minute. What in the world can I say to these people here? These, you know, they, these men were prepared because they were, I just went along, you know. But God says, tell them love finds a way. And of course, they didn't think they didn't think too much of me for giving them that message because, you know, sometimes you do a lot of searching and planning and researching and so on, and sometimes it's so simple. Sometimes it's so simple. To love people is not hard. It's simple, reaching out. It's dying to ourselves. So God wants us now to consider His will priority. Seeking ye first the kingdom, right? And his righteousness. And all things will be added. All those things that they, that, 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 that they spend their time looking for and searching for on the daytime. So, uh, as George comes to the uh, keyboard here, I want you to bow your heads with me. We're going to call upon the Lord and ask him. Dear Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you for, first of all, dealing with me about how sin subtly hardens the heart. And Lord, I ask that you will minister to your people who you love. That we can have a brief time of soul searching and examination. If we've held grudges. If we've been selfish. If we purpose to do things our way. If we love the things that you didn't love. If we fail to keep a tight rein on our tongue. If we failed. Father, forgive us. Let us not assume that everything is well. And even it is not the ones that man commends, but it's the ones who the Lord commends. We all want commendation from you, Lord, because you do, you do an accurate assessment of our lives. While we're praying, Father, I ask that you would let your Holy Spirit gently move in our midst. Let your healing power flow as we turn from any and everything that interferes with the glory of your presence. How we'll give your name to praise. We'll give your name to honor. The will of God. I want to call on the ministers first, those that are in any form of leadership of you. First, if you have already done this, you're walking in God's will. You're satisfied that you're walking in His will. And pray with me while we're praying. If you are not 
satisfied with walking in his will. Would you just gently stand? And we will, we want to know that our labor is not in vain. Thank you, Father. Send the help that comes from your spirit. Break every yoke, loose chains, set people free by your divine power. Time is short. It's winding up. Souls are dying. People are crying. Anyone, as far as leaders, you, you want to so I want to get a bit close to God. I just know that there's room for me. I want to not be like Jonah. I want to obey the call. I want to be about the Father's business. I want to, uh, you know, I want to do it, God. I want to do it. I want to correct the things that need correcting, God. I, I, I want to do this. Then I pray for such a person today. Father, stretch forth your hands to the leaders first of all. That each one of us will be the kind of example that is pleasing to you. Heal by your power, set free in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll give your name to glory. We'll give your name to honor. Send help from your sanctuary. We thank you. We bless you, Father. And secondly, if there are those of you that said, I, I'm not walking with God as I should. I've not included him in all my plans. I've just kind of been living my life the best I know how, the way I want to feel like it's right but I haven't really 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 put him at the forefront of my plans to guide me and to, to make sure that I'm walking with him so that uh, there'll be no surprises in the future if you, you feel that way and you just want to do just would you mind stepping right out of your seat and just join me right here at the altar and we're going to just pray a prayer and start.